Hey, what's up? Chase Craig here with Own Boise, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about the market stats. And this video is actually inspired. I, I uh, saw a real estate agent in our area. Um, they had said something on, on Facebook that they were sensing a, a market slowing, and there was a ton of comments, and people were like, thank goodness, and other people were like, no, and you know, the sky is falling and, and uh, they asked him why he thought it was, was, uh, was slowing down and, uh, or why he thought there was going to be a lull. And, uh, you know, he referenced, well, you know, inventory is going up and, you know, uh, this might be the beginning. Well, I am a statistical nerd and I'm going to be referencing this little document right here. Uh, the... This just inspired me. I, I mean, I, I study the market dynamics very closely every single month, and I've done that for years and years and years. And basically, our market since 2011 has done the same thing. And I'm going to go ahead and, and show that to you through data real quick. Uh, so nerd alert. We're going to nerd out here on this session. If you really want to know what's happening in Ada County and the real estate market and why things are the way they are, uh, stay tuned for the next five, six minutes, and we'll explain it all. So... All right, let's dive in. Um, the market's done the same thing since 2011, every single year. About the middle of February, the market decides to get hot, and it stays hot until about mid to the end of May. Then we have a lull, a summer lull, June, July, summer lull. There's a, a little bit of a pickup in August, late July, early August, uh, where we see people scramble to get homes for school districts and doing the switcheroo during summer. Then we see another little bit of a lull for September. October picks up again, last minute people trying to get in before the holidays. So October through about Thanksgiving picks up and then we see a slowdown again, uh, basically from Thanksgiving until uh, the, the end of January, middle of February. So that's what it's done every single year uh, since 2011. Um, every single year, same thing. So I want to just show you, uh, you know, and, and that realtor was right. He was sensing a lull. So this is May of last month. Um, and here's what I did. I'm not going to bore you by doing this on every single one. I've already done the math here. I just want to show you. So in 2000, May of 2019, so this is last uh, or two months ago, uh, it, let's just take the 200 to 250 market. What I did is I said, okay, well, if there's 0.2 months worth of inventory at the end of May, what was it like at the end of June? 0.2 months. Okay, nothing really changed there. It was even. 0.5 months in two. Uh, that's 250 to 300. Oh, what happened? It went up a little bit. 0.7. So I just took 0.5 uh, divided by 0.7, and you come up with, you know, 71%. So so that means it adjusted about 28 and a half, 29%. So I just said, well, the market went up 30%. So I did that on every single one of them, okay? I'm not going to walk you through every one here, but I just want you to notice. So from 250 to 300, it went up roughly 30%, just like I showed you. From uh, 350 or 300 to 350, up 30%. 350 to 400, up 26%. 400 to 500, up 26%. 500 to 600, actually went down 7%. Uh, 6 to 800, down 3%. 800 to a million down 20%. And that's not suggesting that those homes are selling quicker. I would just argue that those people didn't want to have their house on the market over the summer because they're traveling. Uh, and then uh, 1 million plus, the inventory was actually up 18%. So let's just kind of break this down for a second here. Uh, the market definitely has gone up in inventory on, on a whole. You know, there's a lot more pluses than there are minuses here. So I said, well, you know, is this a sign that we're slowing down or that we're, you know, in trouble or the market lull like that agent suggested? So I said, well, let's go back to May of 2018. Notice May of 2018 right here. What happened there? So I did the same exact thing. Here's June of 2018. Same exact numbers. So let's just see what happened from May to June of last year. Because we all know, well, you guys might not know. I'll explain here later. All right, so May uh, to June, the market actually went up 33%, 2 to 250. 
up 12% 250 to 300, up 30% 300 to 350, up 6% 350 to 400, up 5% 400 to 500, up 18% 500 to 600, up 3% 6 to 800, down 7% 800 to a million, down 33% 1 million plus. Again, I would argue those uh, higher end homes, they're only going down because those people are taking it off the market because they had it listed through spring. It didn't sell. They took it off the market so they could go enjoy their summer and not mess with selling their house. So why does this happen? Okay. So we can already, we've, I'm just proven to you what I've seen every single year. This is just one year. If I broke this down going years and years and years, I would nerd out even on the next level and bore you guys to death. But I promise you it's the same story. So this realtor who's a great, I mean, seemingly great agent, um, you know, either hasn't been paying attention or, or, you know, maybe just wanted to engage with his people. Um, but I'm telling you, it's a normal thing. So why do we have a summer lull? Well, here's what happens. Everyone's told that, oh yeah, good time to sell your house is in the summer. That's actually not the best time. You know, the best time to sell your house is when you're ready. But if you had a choice, you would want to sell it in the spring. That's when we have the least amount of inventory and the most amount of activity from buyers. Because what happens is we hit summer and then everyone does what? Travels. They're traveling. They're going and doing things. They're enjoying the outdoors. We have an amazing outdoors, uh, uh, you know, here. Uh, amazing summers here. Biking, hiking. Uh, people are fishing and rafting. Uh, they're not out looking for houses on the majority. A lot of them are slowing down. So all these people have been told, sell your house in the summer. So they're putting their homes on the market. Uh, the buyers are no longer looking as much as they were. You also have the issue of spring was so good. Realtors don't know how to slow down. So they're like, oh yeah, well, it sold two months ago for 500,000. Let's try 550. And so we see them stay on the market because they overpriced them because spring was hot, but summer usually slows down. Now those same homes will come down back to 500 where they should have been to begin with. And they'll probably have to negotiate even more because they've been on the market for a while. So uh, I know this was a lot of, of information here, a lot of data. And I know these, uh, these spreadsheets might not be your jam. Just take it from me. Uh, this is not a sign of a, a long-term slowdown. We have no clue. This is what it's done every single year since 2011. So if you're a buyer or a seller in this market, if you're a seller, don't think, oh, I have to sell now. It's at the peak. It might be. I can tell you it's never been a better time to sell than it is today. If you're a buyer, don't think, oh, I'm going to wait for prices to come down because I can tell you right now, rates are as low as they possibly are going to get at 3.875 right now for a 30-year fix in the middle of July 2019. Like, jump on it, jump on it. Don't don't think the market's going to go down because there's a, a little bit of a lull. So, I hope this helped you out. Again, I'm Chase Craig with Own Boise. If you have any questions on real estate or this information, uh, you know, reply in the comments. Uh, send us a personal message. We'd love to help you out. Thanks a lot, guys.